Welcome to the Dr. Lambert Podcast, episode number 193, originally recorded July 31st, 2021. I am Brett, and no matter how many times it's referenced, even if it's not referenced at all, just know that Legion will not be joining us because at the time of this recording, his bowl floweth over with joy and happiness and other things. However, joining me in this podcast is... Lim Humphrey. All right. So going forward in this podcast, we are going to be doing many things. First off, uh, this podcast will be reviewing the some of the June and July releases from Big Finish for 2021. However, before we do that, let's preview what Big Finish had in store for us for the month of August 2021. I do say had because this is now post-production. We have the War Master Killing Time. We have two early adventure stories. We have After the Daleks and The Secrets of Detson. We have the second box set in the Ninth Doctor Adventures. And then uh, Torchwood Empire of Shadows. The Philip Hinchcliffe, the, 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 the always favorite, never faltered, Philip Hinchcliffe presents Volume 4, The God of Phantoms. And then we have... Mm. Stingray, which I have no idea what that is, but I'm probably not into it. Uh, Operation Ice Cap. Yeah, I think for me, the um, Doctor Who releases the early adventures. I'm I, I've always liked those, so I'm very excited about those. And of course, the Ninth Doctor, because I enjoyed the first box set very much. So I'm looking forward to box set number two. And the Philip Hinchcliffe sounds interesting. I've not. I think I've heard one or two of the others, but it does sound interesting. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to those. For me, like Humphrey and I guess also like yourself, Brett, the early adventures definitely are uh, high up on the list. Mainly, I think, because they're covering quite interesting points of Doctor Who history. The one set after the the first Dalek invasion with Susan. And, of course... Yeah, we have the recasting of Dodo as uh, Lauren Cornelius. So that's going to be very interesting to see how that, well, one, how she plays that actually, and two, how they how they actually develop her character and I suppose develop the relationship between the first Doctor and Dodo. And of course, the, it is a, a prequel, I think, to The Abominable Snowman. Yes. So... Mm. It will be interesting to see also as well if this is a prequel to the snowmen or, it, you know, if it's after the prequel of the snowmen, mm. if you know what I mean. So that should be interesting. I'm quite intrigued also by the Warmaster box set, mainly because of the Nissa story more so than the Joe Grant. I mean, it would be interesting to see, or Joe Jones at this point, it would be interesting to see how she reacts to the war master because obviously she felt that again like like it was mentioned in in masterful that they had some kind of relationship uh but as i say for me more interesting for the nissa story purely because it looks like it's old nissa as far as i'm aware obviously you know you've got the whole entropy plague storyline and she gets trapped in east base so whether it's going to delve into that whether he's going to end up, you know, potentially rescuing her and bringing her back to, you know, the prime universe. So, yeah, it will be interesting to see where that's set. I think I will check out the Stingray. I used I watched bits of Stingray and had some of the Stingray stuff as a kid on tape, and so that was good fun. The, again, the only annoyance and the only annoying thing about that is you've got Nick. Briggs playing Titan, which is the villain. And he sounds... And, I, and okay, I know it's sort of overacted to all hell and is a little bit campy. That's just kind of the point. But it just sounds like Nick Briggs is just bad acting. And it just... It is, again, blatantly obvious that it is Briggs. And I, I'm just getting a little bit fed up of Briggs, hearing Briggs in his normal sort of voice if you know what i mean it just takes me out of the story which is a real shame so but i'll check it out to see you know <clears throat> if it's any good 
the Tortured Empire of Shadows, not so much. I mean, I'll listen to it, but not, it's not one I'm really looking for. Philip Hinchcliffe, eh, we'll see. The Ninth Doctor, I'm optimistic for because it's not being written by Nick Briggs, if I recall correctly. Brett, tell me if I'm wrong. So, yeah, we have three stories, all three of them not written by Nick Briggs. Lisa McMullen's writing the first one, Girl Destructed. Tim Foley's reading, writing the second one, Frightened, Fright Motif. And then the third one is Timothy X Attic, Planet of the End. Oh, see, two out of the three writers I don't mind. Tim X Attic, I've always found a bit slow. And his stories tend to just be a bit weird. So uh, I'm hopeful. Could be good, could be bad. It, at this point, I think it could go either way. I think I'm just happy that it's not being written by Briggs. So, yeah. So, I mean, for me, I, I, I just sitting out the War Master, not listening to it. I, did, I didn't like two, three, four. I felt as though I was forced into buying two, three, or three and four because of the Eighth Doctor connection. And I, I vowed no more. I sat out box set five. I'm sitting this one out. Super excited, like both of you, for the early adventures, both after the Daleks, because like you said, Humphrey and Legion, not Legion, Liam, both of you, Liam, Legion probably said it too. Anyway, um, <laughs> he, I, th this is like the first time, like the early adventures have covered such an area such as, mm -hmm. you know, either a prequel with the Abominable Snowmen and a sequel to Dalek Invasion of Earth. So, like, this is, like, the most fascinating thing that the early adventures... Because, I mean, first off, the early adventures, uh, you know, spun off because they cl basically closed the lost stories, but they wanted to have more first and second Doctor stories but they wanted to do like the full cast at the same time because I think that's what was hurting some of, at least in my opinion, some of the lost stories. And then you had, of course, the Companion Chronicles, which were great, but again, they were two-handers at the most. And so you have this beautiful reimagining of both the First and Second Doctor eras and you got to kind of get this these full cast audios. And now, for the first time, we're kind of delving into pre-established settings with, you mm -hmm. know, the Detson and, you know, Dalek mm -hmm. occupation of Earth. So that's going to be kind of interesting. I'm very kind of... I'm on the fence with the Ninth Doctor. And here's the main reason mm -hmm. why. And, you know, I, I'm glad that you had me look that up to see who's writing it because I will, I will tell you when we get into the reviews, I do want to praise what was done by Nick Briggs for the first box, even though we did complain about it. But my biggest concern with this is I felt as though we had a really good companion in, I think the companion's name was Nebula. I think I want to say Nova. I knew it started with the letter N. Thank you. I felt as though she was great. In fact, she is what our Bill Potts should have been. I really liked Nova, and I wish that that's what Bill Potts would have been because Nova was legitimately the sci-fi nerd that could, you know, explain stuff. And I felt as though Bill, like, was one of those quote-unquote fangirls or fake fangirls. I don't feel as though she was as legitimate to the sci-fi nerd as she claimed to be. And that's one of the things that I really liked about Nova. Now, again, we kind of did a part of Return to Tell Us with her where the adventure happened, but it mostly didn't. So they did need to kind of move on with her to some point. 
but I really liked the companion Nova. And so starting off the, the next box set with a brand new companion, I'm, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about this. I, I'm not sure if it is going to be a good, and maybe it's one of those retrospective things where when we look back on it, it's like, you know what, maybe it was a good idea. We had you know one companion in the first box set. Maybe we just have one companion in this one, and then we get a brand new one in the third one, and we get a brand new one in the fourth one. Maybe that will work. I don't know if that's what they're planning, but um, mm. I'm intrigued, but I also would rather one... I, I want more Nova, I guess that's all I can say. Yeah. Um, mm. Everybody knows my Torchwood. In fact, uh, when you s- listen to my and uh, Legion's uh, interview, I do talk about one of the reasons why I'm really not into the Torchwood range. So that's a teaser for the the uh, road to <laughs> episode 200 uh, interview thing. Um, not interested in the Torchwood. It do- has nothing to do with the characters. I've always said Yvonne and kind of Jack and Yento and everybody else is yeah. Philip Hinchcliffe presents I'm really I think like you with the you know with with the Warmaster I've kind of been burned once too you know too often. I'm like Yeah. Yeah with we're now four box sets in and they've not been great. Well four so... box sets in and f- uh, and this will be the fifth story. So, yeah, yeah, I I don't, I will listen to it, but I am going Mm. to, and I try to go into everything, you know, you might not think about, think that I do revolving around, especially when I did my discussions on the Patsonus gang, I try to go in as optimistic as possible. I try not to be jaded. I try try not to, you know, pre-hate something. Because if I pre-hate something, like, you know, my mentality is going to be like, well, let's just find reasons to hate it. And I don't want Mm. to do that. And and so I'm going to try to go into Phil Pinchcliffe doing so. But like you said, the previous box sets are just making it so hard. Yeah. So a quick question. We are halfway through 2021. As we reflect Over back, it's scary. I know. As we reflect back on the releases that we've listened to uh, from January 2021 till July, what are some of those releases that really kind of uh, stick out to you that you really thoroughly enjoyed? I think for me, the both the volumes of the Fourth Doctor Adventures. I really, really enjoyed them, especially Volume 2. But Volume 1 I did enjoy very much too. The Lost Stories, uh, particularly uh, Return of the Cybermen, I thought that was a cracker. Uh, Of course, Scourge of the Cybermen I love. A Dalek Universe I'm enjoying. Uh, The third Doctor Adventures I really enjoyed. So yeah, there's, there's a few. I mean, there are plenty of others I enjoy, but those are ones that are like leaping out at me without me even having to like think about it much. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. No, you did a really good job. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why you do this. Cause I've drawn, I've, I hate this cause you put me on the spot. And now I'm drawing <laughs> a complete bloody blank. Your Dalek universe is very good. I mean, like I said before in a previous podcast, I think the name is a bit confusing and perhaps slightly misleading, but I see what they've done with it and I like what they've done with it. And I like, you know, just the the fact that they're sort of pulling on Terry Nation's ideas and kind of giving them a bit more notice or expanding upon certain things. So I thought that was uh, quite good. Yeah, Third Doctor, again, uh, is quite enjoyable. I'll be interested to see when that comes out. I think, is it October? The ninth series of River um because it's going to be river and old unit with the third doctor so that's going to be interesting with mm, tim that, Chalor. Ooh, ooh, so, that sounds good good we'll see how that pans out and we've got some more third doctor in october yes we do i've enjoyed the avalon box sets that's that's been good nice to see the expansion of the you know the black seven uh world and i suppose also by extension the doctor who universe too in that in that regard 
I would say for me, and I, you know, I quickly, um, as I was listening to Humphrey, I was trying to come up with what stuck out mostly to me. And I would have to say as much as I, I'm currently befuddled by Dalek universe. And it's, I think it's something that I look forward to talking to you about because it's not wowing me at all. I definitely have to go with both lost stories, the return of the Cybermen, but even more the doomsday contract. I absolutely love 11 out of 10 on my Uh. barometer. The, the five people you kill in Middlesbrough, fantastic. The third doctor Uh. adventures is great. And I think rounding them out would probably be out of time too, which just, I just, Thoroughly enjoyable. Huh. So now let's preview ahead to what will be coming out for the remainder of the year. Since we are at the halfway point, and I'm just going to highlight a couple. Don't say anything. I'm just going to go through some of them. I'm not going to read through all mm-hmm. of them. Of course, we've talked about August. And so we have the 11th Doctor uh, Chronicles Volume 2. We have Doctor Who, the 11 with the sixth Doctor, Missy Series 3. And then we have the fifth Doctor, the, the Lost Resort, and other stories. Dalek Universe 3. We have the third Doctor Adventures, Volume 8. That's going to be coming out this year. As well as the Survivor's Audiobook, the ninth Doctor Adventures, Volume 3. And the Jenny, the Doctor's Daughter, Series 2. Unit Nemesis 1, and then, let's see. And then... Survivors... Just a second, just uh, a second. Then, to round out the year, we have the another Survivors. We have uh, Stranded 3, and then we have the, the Year of Martha Jones, which you talked about in the last podcast, and then we have the, uh, the, the War Doctor beginning, a Warbringer, and Robots 5, and some Blake 7 stuff thrown in here and there. So what are you looking for forward to for the second half of the year? And that includes anything that comes out in August also. For me, I am looking forward to the new Survivors box set. I'm hoping that they will continue the series and branch out and bring back characters that we've seen in previous box sets uh, for example, Maddie Price from series one to three. It'd be interesting to sort of see the audio books that they're sort of now doing as well. It seems like they seem to be doing a lot of tie-in box sets with audios, uh, which brings me neatly on to the Blake 7 stuff. Again, Worlds of Blake 7, really, really looking forward to the Babe and the Butcher box set. With Colin Baker, that's going to be very, very, very interesting. The Clone Masters box set is going to be very good uh, because that's going to star, obviously, Jenna Callie alongside both Travises, uh, played by Stephen Greif and Brian Croucher, respectively. Uh, So, yeah, I think that's that's really going to be uh, quite interesting. And I am really hyped for... For the next War Doctor Begins, uh, Jonathan Carley, I think, has done a fantastic job of embodying the War Doctor. And as I think we all said again in the last podcast, that I hope there's many more box sets than just four to come because I'm really liking the incarnation and the direction of where they're going with it. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this series will go on and on and on because uh i think that the time war has got legs and has you know it goes into some very interesting places and i think is uh definitely ripe for a uh, long term expansion basically and use uh so you know more stories the better yeah what about you humphrey what are you looking forward to in the second half of this year uh like liam the time war stuff um because i really enjoyed the first box set i am 
Looking forward to the Ninth Doctor Volume 3, the third Doctor Adventures. That'll be cool because uh, I've always liked those. So the fact we're getting a second volume of those is uh, really interesting. And I'm excited about that. Jenny, the Doctor's Daughter, should be good because I did enjoy Series 1 of that when that came out a couple of years ago. And the Blake 7 stuff should be really cool. I can't believe that we're on uh, already, we're on s- box at eight of the third Doctor Adventures. It's kind of crazy isn't it i know i feel fortunate that we have two that came out this year instead of you know basically one per year one for the most part yeah so So like you i'm very excited for i I am i'm all for anything survivors i love survivors Mm -hmm. more survivors please um Jenny, the doctor's daughter, I, something that we've been crying about for the past couple of years. It's finally happening. Obviously, the third doctor, that's one of my doctors that I really enjoy. And then the 11 with the sixth doctor. I'm really intrigued to find out what's going on with that. That I can just, I, I think that's going to be a fun series to do. I, I kind of wish it wasn't the 11. I wish it, you know, it could have been like, you know, the eight or the nine, something like that. So that, you know, because I feel as though the 11 and the seventh doctor have like more of a closeness, but maybe it's because Mm. the the sixth doctor had that relationship first. So it's going to be kind of interesting to find out what they do with the 11. um... Did you see the news that was mentioned in Radio Times kind of cryptic? Well, not not cryptically, but kind of a bit of a, ooh, white flag, look at this. And it was Mark Bonner expressing his interest to work with Tom Baker as the 11. No, I did not hear that. But Mm. I am all Uh, for any actor that wants to, you know, again, do as much stuff that they can with tom baker so yeah so apparently mark really wants to work with tom in that role specifically so i i i really think there's gonna that's gonna have been a bit of a a, uh wink wink nod nod this is in the pipeline type of a situation i mean so who knows maybe maybe it's something that has already been recorded i mean what is it they already have Mm, like mm, you know mm. three seasons already in the can so um yeah I wouldn't it's be surprised. Just, yeah. All right. Well, with that, let's get to the big finish reviews. And I think we'll skip the box of delights for this month because I know uh-huh. Legion would Legion's really here and I love to, to get to that. So let's start off with Jago and Lightfoot series 14, which is an audio book, which is for I, I did not listen to this. Humphrey, did you listen to Jago and Lightfoot? No, because I, I haven't heard uh any more after series two yet so i kind of want to hear it all before i yeah oh series three sorry yeah i beg your pardon um so i kind of want to hear the rest of it before coming to that okay. point so I, Liam, I, I really like it uh like i say i know you're not so big in the audio but at least listen to the first story jamie newell fantastic narrator fantastic actor does really good impersonations of both Jago and Lightfoot and I'd be happy if it was just him reading more Jago and Lightfoot adventures uh he could do it all day so yeah bring him back because because very very good um narrator and and reader uh quite surprised at how accurate he gets the mannerisms of both of them I mean I think he is actually an impersonator so that's not a surprise but I mean yeah very good sets up and it explains where series 13 ends. Uh, I liked the box set. It was very good. It was nice to have some closure on this particular uh, set of scripts because, you know, we thought for the longest time that we, w- we weren't going to see it. And the Jago Night Foot and Forever was just kind of the, the celebration and, and it, the, 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 the story felt a little bit, not rushed, but shoehorned in almost. And again, because of, you know, extenuating circumstances and because obviously, you know, the, the, the sad passing of Trevor Baxter. So, of course, you know, that's got to be taken in, into consideration. And it's a real shame that they, they, they couldn't record because it brings back an interesting villain. So 
and it, it just was a shame that it wasn't full cast because I think it would have been really good. And yeah, uh, it was a good, a good, a good box set overall. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, there were some weaker, weaker readers. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Christopher, you know, Benjamin, brilliant as Jago, not the best narrator or impersonator in the world probably the weakest of the four unfortunately which is a real shame because i love christopher benjamin as an, as an actor and especially you know playing jago but i mean i want them to get him back and delhi and and um conrad asquith and and all that back more you know use them in in the pat Noster gang box sets because it's set in the same location same time period and you know Christopher Benjamin, unfortunately, is getting on on in years. You know, he's not he's not a spring chicken anymore. And like you keep saying, Brett, as well. You know, like with Tom Baker, if actors want to work with certain doctors or or certain other actors, make it happen. Just do it because it's 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 worth it, and it will please fans. And I don't see why they can't continue doing Jago and Lightfoot stuff from now on you know because big finish seem to be doing this thing of doing a lot of audio books recently because they're quite probably quite cheap to produce quite easy to produce so fair enough you know if that's what's gonna move stuff forward in stories to a degree then you know why not yeah i, I really enjoyed it i'd give it a uh, 7.5 out of 10 okay so uh, and also just to say it doesn't detract from Jago and Lightfoot and Forever because it is that is set after 14. So you can listen to that. And because I know, Brett, you were worried that it was going to spoil yeah. the kind of ending. It, yes. it doesn't, not at all. That's so, fine. yeah. So with that, let's go from one Doctor Who uh, world release to another one. Uh, Torchwood, Madam, I'm... Again, I'm not into Torchwood. Um, I'm pretty sure Humphrey has not listened to this, but uh, what are your thoughts? I've listened to this. Yeah, it's not bad. It is set during Soho Parasite, which is the first Soho box set, because obviously uh, uh, <clears throat> the, the the first Soho well, Parasite box set starts off with uh, Norton Folgate being introduced to Room 13, along with Elizabeth Hayhoe and events play out in that box set and this story takes place in the middle of that box set yeah not a bad story i'd just say the ending hmm? does it flesh out uh some more some of the aspects of uh par you know parasite soho Soho parasite yeah um not not that box set but it you know, but it's clear that it's, it takes place during that time period. The ending just felt a little bit abrupt and kind of came from nowhere to me a little bit. Nice to sort of see a returning character from Torchwood. It's a shame. I've not watched the episode in question for a long time. So I can't remember if they do explain how Adam first turns up in Torchwood. Because technically, chronologically, that wouldn't be the first time. That would be the second time. So I'd have to go back and watch that. But this is set before all that happened. So, hmm. yeah. Um, I'd give it 6 out of 10. It was okay, but not high re-listen value. You know, again, some good one-liners from both Samuel Barnett and... Um, Dervla Kerwin, who I'm really liking as an actor, but not, not, not high on my list of re-listens. I have not listened to Cicero. I've been working on the previous uh, series See, of Cicero. I've, I've listened to that, but I don't, I don't know if Humphrey has. But uh, yeah, I don't think I he has. Doubt it. And I, uh, I have, and it's a, it's a shame because I love Sam Barnett in the role or Sam Barnett stuff generally. But I think then this is the thing I found that, that I, I I think I just I just don't like about the range is yes, the 
time period is is interesting to a degree. But what I don't and what I find a bit of a bugbear is everyone is, you know, Quintus Marcus Sextus or 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 uh, Aurelia blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? It's always three names. I'm like, do you have to say every single name? Every single time you're addressing somebody it is really grating. Honestly, it's just, I think it's just political and, and it's just quite dry and quite slow. And mm. I just guess I'm not that much into Roman politics. See, I, I, I'm really intrigued by, you know, this one crossroads because the previous one, I only got into the first episode just the other day. And I was really enjoying it because it was, I believe, when was the last series done? Was that 2019? That the... Uh, yeah. That was, yeah. But I, as I was listening to it... I It was when the Big Finish Originals range first came out. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the, the just, you know... The, episode one i'm talking about series one because series yes. one came out yeah, that a was, year yeah. after episode one but they include the pilot yeah yeah i'm talking about the yeah, second yeah. episode and what i oh, yeah, liked yeah, yeah, about yeah. what i really liked about it and again it is political but what happened in the second episode of cicero is that there was a massive problem these things that were going on in the government and they were like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe. Do you think this is being covered up? And you're sitting there. Th as I was listening to it, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I think this is happening in politics in modern time. It's just amazing. You know, granted, it's dramatized. I believe, you know, certain things uh, do have some his uh, historical significance, which I am all for. And I just I'm enthralled by it because I what was it in the second episode they're trying to this one guy's trying to this he's basically doesn't want his wife to have get custody of his kids and so he goes to the politicians and convinces everybody to vote that to, today is an unlucky day which means the markets have to be closed and don't worry <laughs> Because tomorrow has also been voted an unlucky day and the markets and everything and the, you know, the court system will be closed. And I'm like, I, I was just amazed. Cause I'm like, I can see you, you, we can't say that it's an unlucky day because you know, we we're, we're not as superstitious as they were back then, but still some of the mm. tricks that the politicians do to either get out of voting or to, you know, to prevent something from happening are things that, you know, dates back to 60 what bc like th mm. this is amazing like i i'm totally into this series it, it, it's not something that you can sit and binge the whole thing it is no, too no I, it's no yeah but i really enjoy sister i'm looking forward to it and what i'm really looking forward to now though is talking with you i only want listen to one episode and I didn't listen to it because it was bad. It was just because I would mm. spent most of my time pulling sound. But uh, Lady Christina, Series 2. So, Humphrey, I want to paint you a picture. So, about a week, week and a half ago, I get this call <laughs> from an English gentleman who is in hysterics. Not like hysterically screaming, not hysterically like, you know, panicking, like hysterically laughing, like can barely form a sentence because he's laughing so hard and is trying to relate to me the plot <laughs> of the first episode. I don't even think he got to the first ep through the first episode. I think it was halfway through or 10 minutes into it or 20 minutes into the first episode, just hysterically giggling and laughing. And, uh. and so I, 
like, well, thank you for saving my time. I, I don't think I, I want to have anything to do with this. And then, and he, and then he goes, oh, come on, please listen to this. You know, it'll, it's a lot, it'll be a lot more enjoyable if more than one person has listened to this. And I'm like, oh, I kind of want to, if it's that bad, I don't want to, you know, spend, because my time is valuable. I'm like, I don't want to waste my time, but I'm like, you know what? If it is that bad, I would like to, you know, discuss this. And at least I got through the first episode one, The Wreck by James Goss. And I will tell you, I didn't think it was that bad. Really? Like, yeah. The way you yeah. described it, basically, th 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 this is, I, I, and, you know, maybe... I, I almost feel as though we listened to two different stories because huh. Liam calls me up and he is just like, oh my gosh, the, 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 uh, Lady Christina's father is dating this chick named Bunny. And I'm just like, all right. So he, he's, he's got himself like, you know, a 20 year old stripper wife. Oh, like, okay. Like, you know what? You, you do you like, <laughs> <laughs> whatever <laughs> and then he and then liam was just like and then like you know she got infected with this crystal thing and diamonds are growing inside of her body and liam at least portray and correct me if i'm wrong liam stop me if i'm wrong mm. you portrayed it as if nobody cared she was slowly dying lady I christina didn't. actually did care but for some reason, and here's the thing that kind really? of baffled me the entire time, is she wanted to call huh. Unit, and her dad's like, no, don't do that. I don't want you to do that. But her dad was in, like, denial. Like, she would, like, well, this was I mean. serious. And, uh, uh, yeah, and but she could clearly see it was serious, and but, yeah, she was just like, oh. And uh, he's like, oh, no, I didn't know that. Oh, okay, Dad. Okay. And she just doesn't, doesn't, she didn't. She didn't force the issue. She's like, look, she's dying. I, you know, she needs help. We really need to do something about this. But, like, do you know what I mean? It just was really, I don't know. Just and the dialogue was just so hokey. Oh, do you have doors in space? Um, well, let me think about that for a second. Okay, if you think that dialogue's bad. I criticized how bad Bill Potts' dialogue was all throughout series 10. And you said there was no, <laughs> no, nothing wrong with it. If, if, if there's nothing wrong with Bill Potts' dialogue, like saying, oh, are we in a kitchen? Oh. I, I, uh, if, you I have, mean, if you have no problem with Bill Potts' dialogue, there's no problem with this dialogue at all. I mean, I didn't say her dialogue was perfect, but oh my god, it just—I don't know—it just stuck out to me. And I'm like, James, James, buddy, what are you doing? This is not your usual caliber. Like, what, what happened here? <laughs> so, um, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't didn't. Know. I didn't I have a problem with this episode. Is it great? No, but to me, this is basically what Lady Christina, the Galisa first season of Lady Christina is. It's like a 6.5 or a 7. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. I will gladly listen to Lady Christina a hundred times in a, consecutively over listening to the Passionist Gang once. I hate the yeah. Passionist Gang. And I, I have no problem so far with Lady Christina. Like, I just... Yeah, fair enough. I don't know. I just... And Sam, right? Sam. Sam Bishop. Meant to be a unit operative, right? Okay, well, I I have not gotten that far. So you can tell me about episode two, no. Outback. No, 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 no. He's in, he's in episode one. He turns up in episode one. She says to him, because he goes to pick up the, you know, the stuff that's infecting people with the, you know. With yes. The, yeah. Yeah. And she goes, oh, um, careful. If I scratches you, you'll get infected. Oh, okay. And then she goes, um, you might want to wear gloves with that. before." And I'm like, hang on. And he goes, oh, yeah. 
And I'm just like, you're a unit operative. How the hell have you survived this long? Like, you should be dead by rights at this point. See, <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, like, the, the I, way you described it and the way you're describing it now is exactly how you called it me uh, on the phone. And to me, there's actually more drama and interactions than what you were telling me. I mean, there was, granted, Lady Christina's dad like was in denial the entire time. And then when finally his you know, fiance shatters, he is in hysterics and basically blames her for the entire thing, which again, he was in denial for most of it. Yeah, but but and to it, me, it, right, that, that scene was, was meant to be dramatic and, you know, like oh my god, his what his 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 fiance has just died. I, I I piss myself laughing. I know. I, I, I you were calling me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, and and I'm just like, th that was meant to be really heartfelt and sad and. It, I, See, I, don't know. I thought it was, it was just hilarious. It was. I didn't. It was just I didn't hilarious. I didn't find a single moment. <laughs> funny in there i you know was it the best no but it was not like you made it sound like they were doing like a benny hill sketch like i uh, just I, I, I don't know i felt as though either, either i i think we either listened either to I've two different episodes or, or, uh, maybe i don't know i don't know but i I don't know did you have uh, any like certain bra special brownies before you were listening to it i mean that could uh nope <laughs> nope <clears throat> stone cold sober Oh my god, that would have been a treat if I had. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ten times better. I don't know. No, I, I, I just guess. I, I have <sighs> no problem with this, none whatsoever. Uh, I, I, mm. I, I will be listening to when I get some time. You know, episode two and three. But what did you think about Outback and uh, the Long Shot? Long Shot. I thought it was a bit pretentious. Kind of was a bit up. It, it was. Just, I felt like it was a bit kind of up its own ass. Outback was more interesting purely because it was set in Australia. Now, I don't know if the actors they got to play the people were actually Australian or if they were just doing accents. I don't know. But I liked it because it was just a little bit different. And, you know, it was, I think, more the location more than anything else than, you know, than, than, than the, the story, really. The story was okay. It wasn't bad. But it was nice to sort of go somewhere that Doctor Who has not really gone uh, too much before. You know, so it was nice to it not be in England or Europe or, you know, so the the soundscape and the sound design on that episode was good because it, you had all the wildlife, you know, in of Australia there. So it was just it just was nice to be somewhere different. So what would you rate? Lady Christina Volume Two, five. It's really not up there on my re-listen list. Oh, it's it's not uh, re-listenable, but it's definitely not as bad as some other releases I could think of. Um, let's get to because I'm really interested in what your thoughts are, both of you. Uh, Humphrey, did you listen to Dalek Universe Two? Um, I am about halfway through it uh but i am enjoying it so dalek universe 2 we have three stories uh the cycle of destruction by roy gill is the first one which gives us a it, it's really weird because the at the very end of the episode the doctor or anya make a comment like isn't it interesting we met my family first and then we've met Mark Seven's family now. Like, I wonder if this is all a coincidence. And I was thinking back to a phone call that me and Liam had where Liam said, don't you find it interesting that for the most part, we've not really met a Dalek in Dalek universe yet? Uh, I think myself that it's sort of because it, it's a, it, it's a big story it's not just you know some little 
you know, box set, but that's just one or two box sets because it's a big thing. I think because obviously the prequel with uh, Tom Baker, we had them in, but I think the Daleks are, if you will, coming. Um, oh, yeah. I think, well, they've got to be because there's only one more box set left. Exactly. I think it will be the last box set where we really have Dalek shenanigans. Well, well, I mean, you you can read the synopsis for the for the last volume on the site now. So, I, I mean, like I said before, the name is misleading. I think to a, yes. a a bigger or lesser extent. However, I like the ideas that they have and or story strands that they've banded around for the most part, because the, it's it's really a a love letter to Terry Nation in the sense of being allowed to use his ideas that he came up with within Doctor Who to a wider extent, and I suppose shine a light on those ideas. So... Do I think the box set has been misnamed? Perhaps. Is it a bad box set, though? Mm, no. I, you know, I quite like the uh, the box set. Granted, I feel you had to or have to listen to uh, the fourth Doctor Adventures Series 8 to fully appreciate it. Yes. Um... If you don't, then I think you'd be left with a lot of questions okay. and hang well, on, what the hell's bef- going on? Before we talk about the, th- the last episode, The Cycle of Destruction by Roy Gill, where hmm. we meet Mark Seven's family. Can I tell you, at least at that point, I'm like, I think we're wasting time. I appreciated meeting Anya Kingdom's father in the last mm-hmm. episode of mm-hmm. volume one yeah that was nice when i was listening to this one granted uh i was extremely stressed out uh at the time my car has massive problems and i will have a massive bill soon and i was listening to it at about that time but i just feel as though it was just a wasted story it was the slowest of the three yeah. He was slow. Granted. I mean, uh, to me, it was almost like, hey, remember Data from the next generation and how we met his brother? Why don't we meet Mark Seven's brothers and sisters too? And it would be fine uh, if there was some nuance to the whole thing. But I've I've watched probably about two handfuls of Star Trek the Next Generation episodes. And they happen to many of them are data heavy episodes. And maybe it's just because I just happened to watch those ones. And I'm just, I got tired of data heavy episodes, especially when his brother was in the whole thing. And now I feel as though it's just like, oh, hey, let's do a data episode with Mark Seven. And so I don't know. I just didn't enjoy this storyline yeah yeah i mean i liked it i can i can see your point brett about it i personally quite enjoyed it but equally it doesn't necessarily add masses to the box set you know it's nice in a way you know it's not it's nice to me you know that the fact that so you meet both their families, but at the same time, uh, and it's not a bad episode, but it doesn't really add to the overall storyline. Excuse me, storyline. Yeah. No. So the second story. I mean, was... and uh, Sorry, and also, yeah. especially given especially given the events that happen in the second story as well, I think that was almost played up for Drama? effect. Effect. Okay. Drama. Yeah. Yeah. I, the second episode, I I also didn't like, you know, the Trojan Dalek by John Dorney. We've already done this story before in the main range where Daleks were not Daleks, but they were, col- uh, you know, they, oh, it was just, 
not Khaled's. Um, what was it? I can't remember what that story was, but they, we've already done this story in the main range. And mm-hmm. we're taking, but I mean, they, they did some nuanced stuff. They found somebody who, they found people, human beings that were basically mortally wounded and then they mutated them into Dalek so that they could supplant them like, with, like a Trojan horse into the Dalek fleet, which they did is, it by grafting Khaled, I guess, bits yeah. onto them. Uh huh. Which, mm. which is an interesting and quite grim. It is. Thought, I suppose it's rather grim. Yeah, I mean, see. They they drop a comment about the Sontaran. What was it? Fragmentation mine. Yeah. Is it? Yes. I, I want to know more about those. I mean, they I, sound I, horrible. I agree. Like, <laughs> like when they when they brought that up, I'm like, okay, can we just like nix this whole story? Let's go into like a Sontaran war. Let's go to the Sontaran universe. Let's let's end this Dalek universe. Let let's do this. This sounds more interesting because I ah, didn't like the first story, really didn't like the second story. I was probably about 10 minutes into the third story. Didn't And then suddenly, the third story, at least for me, I was riveted. And finally, I was just like, okay, I like this, this story. I don't like the box set, but I like this story. Mm. And what, what got you riveted to that story out of interest so what so uh, again for the most part the 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 lost by robert valentine it was basically a two-hander to some aspect yeah uh you know at the very end of uh, trojan dalek uh, mark seven gets blasted and is dead and can i tell you i looked up the cast and crew for dalek universe three i'm so thankful mark seven is not in the cast for (laughs) leave him leave him be leave him be he does get irritating doesn't he well it's it's not that he's irritating it it goes back to the 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 unit box set with what's his face who's indestructible but can also be easily taken over he's like chameleon who is indestructible but can also be easily taken over so finally, we have Mark Seven, who's kind of indestructible, but he gets you know destroyed, killed, or and then in, in two previous episodes, he had been taken over. I'm tired mm. of indestructible, super strong individuals that can easily be taken over. So if you can kill them off, kill them off, and don't bring them back. Yeah. Yeah. Leave him. Leave Mark Seven B. He's dead. He's gone. You know, I, I, I'm sorry. You know, the the characters. You know, he's a good actor, but let's leave Mark Seven B. And but you have this two. It's amazing, isn't it? You, you, you hear Mark Seven, and then you hear Joe Sims. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard the difference? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, the ver- yes, I am Mark Seven, and then ear right. Basically, what you got here is, and it's like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so for me. It, it, you know, the, the last episode is a two-hander for the most part. You know, Mark Seven makes his appearance. And then I started panicking because I'm like, oh, please, no, you're supposed to be dead. <laughs> and then, you know, he, he is. It's this entity that is a godlike mm. entity that wants to live, which granted, uh, you know, it, it had so much compassion because it's just like, I can't leave. I have to go with you. But... I don't know why I'm here. I probably deserve to be here, but you need to take me with me, you, because I want to live. And they were pleading. And I really felt as though this godlike entity probably either learned its lesson or has just been on its own for so long that whatever caused it to be there to begin with, you know, whichever, however they got it there, it deserved to be there. And you, yeah. And then I was sitting there thinking, well, maybe, you know, you know, the crime fit the punishment. Maybe this thing deserves to go free. But then the manipulation 
that they were it was doing really began to opening up things where Anya Kingdom was being confronted with her fa- the image of her father, him telling her all the things that the doctor wouldn't tell her about Brett Viren and uh, Sarah Kingdom. And then you have the doctor who is first off guilted by himself. And the entity said, mm. well, because, you know, you know, you're really into yourself. That's why I'm using huh? you. And he's just like, I, am, am I? Am, am I into myself that much? I didn't know I was. Maybe I am. And so the, and then the entity starts guilting him with Anne Kelso, you know, the, this not, non-existent mm. person that the fourth doctor grew to love and resented and hated Anya Kingdom for basically killing a decent human being, even though she that person never existed. And the interactions that they had between each other was just great. And the the point that came across was, well, would you is like, why won't you tell me or Anya Kingdom what happened to my uncle and my aunt? And the doctor's just like, you know, you don't deserve to be told that. And he just, they, they kept on going back and forth. And he goes, fine. You know the reason why I won't tell you Ann Kelso? Or I would tell this to Ann Kelso, my friend, my but companion. But I would not tell it to you. And to me, I was just like, that. that's when, like, this, the, this, the characters really, like, got pulled out. And... When the whole kind of reset of what happened, I I would never classify this as a return to tell us thing. It was because no. it 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 still happened. They still remembered the whole thing, except they were never stranded with the lost, but yet they were at the same time, which is great. Mm. I really enjoyed that. Mm. Yeah. Um I I did like this story. I think it was the best at the box set. As you say, the interaction between Doctor and Anya was, you know, really interesting to see. And, you know, nice that we found out or she found out what happened. Yes. Which, it, it, I mean, I, I like it because they found out what happened through, like, it was like, I think I remember this from happening, but I wasn't sure. And the doctor had to confirm, yeah, yeah, the the loss was a thing. We did encounter it, but we didn't. And I do love what Anya Kingdom did. She self-sacrificed herself, and she she did it knowing that the universe is actually needing to be could only be made better through the doctor. She takes the lost inside of her feels its power, its energy, and realizes that this thing can't ever escape. And it's it's like the humanity part of the whole thing, which is, you know, one of those other great things that, it, you know, they do a really good job with the 10th Doctor oftentimes, sometimes with the 11th Doctor in, in the TV series, but where they're, they, they love people but they also disliked being around people because people's lives are so minuscule compared to a Time Lord's life and the pain so, and the hurt. Here's my question. How did she go, from, again, again, spoilers, but how, how did she go from being dead to not? I don't quite get that so, bit in the episode. So the, so the, the 10th Doctor... Decide, you know, decided to not go through the portal because there was only one way out, and that it was through the portal. And the mm-hmm. doctor said, "No, I can come up with another way." He used uh, whatever was left over from the machines from the collapsing universe. He used some of the power to propel himself to just before he and Anya Kingdom went to this falling apart thing. He because basically what he was using was the Dalek. Um, time corridor oh but you needed yeah. you, you needed two ends for it to be working and he only at the very beginning he only had the one end 
that was working and which, Mm -hmm. and so his, you know, the first part of him came in, helped kind of boost the power to get him to out of there, not giving him the time corridor, but preventing him from going down the corridor, which would eventually lead them to the Mm. planet of the lost or the realm or whatever it was. So, so basically he sacrifices himself just to unfix the yes. problem, as it were. And then I was worried that they were going to unfix uh, Mark Seven's death, too. I was like, no, please, please be dead. Please be dead. Please be dead. Whew. Yes. However, we <laughs> do get this beautiful moment at the very end of The Lost. When are we, do you think? Your side of the time war? Oh, no, what now? We're under attack. Right, what have we got? Six starships in V formation. Not just any starships. Mavellan starships. Mavellan? We've got bigger problems than that, Doctor. Why are they shooting at us? They're not. Oh, no, look. That's a Dalek saucer. We're still on the wrong side of the wall. And we're caught in the crossfire. Get us out of here, Anya. Get us out of here now! Oh, that's easier said than done. I don't believe it. We're being hailed. By the Mavellans? No, by the Daleks. Open the channel. Hello, sweetie. What? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Uh, that's not something you'd ever imagine a Dalek to say. <laughs> no, that nope. totally nope. caught me off guard when I heard that. I was like, wait, did I hear that right? And I had to, you know, hit rewind. I'm like, no, I did hear that right. <laughs> yeah, I, I did the same thing. Brilliant. <laughs> Love it. So, uh, Humphrey, what are your thoughts so about what you've heard of Dalek Universe 2 so far? Um, well, I got to, um, well, I, I had the first two stories, so I kind of gave you my thoughts on the first one earlier. Um, yeah. I mean, the second one, again, I can see why, I see what you mean about it kind of being an idea that's used before, but I have to admit I enjoyed it, actually, because it's a long time since I heard that main range one that did it, and I remember it, but I can't remember the name of it. Which one was it in the main range? Oh, I can't remember, but never mind. Um, but I still enjoyed it. I thought it was an interesting story. I'd say I definitely preferred it to the first one. The first one was fine. It was quite nice. But as I said earlier, it didn't really add to the plot. But this one I did like, and there it, it was certainly some pretty frightening concepts in there that made me, you know, sort of make your skin crawl a bit, that whole taking humans and essentially bolting bits of carlids onto them is rather disgusting in my opinion it just oof uh and yeah i was intrigued by that sontar and thing and i thought it was a shame they didn't expand on that that could have been interesting but never mind but no i liked that story and i'm definitely looking forward to listening to the lost so what just to to end this what would you give dalek universe 2 Seven out of ten, as you say, the third story is is the best. I didn't mind story two. I granted, I had to go back and re listen to it because I was like, this is slow. This is going nowhere, and I didn't give it my fullest attention. But I do, as you say, agree with you. Story three is really really good. I love the interactions and I like the revelations that finally get you know pulled to the surface and it does not change the dynamic but you know there's character development so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i would have to give the box set a six the last episode is like an 8.5 for me but the first two Mm. are like a four like i just i 
I almost decided to just peace out of, uh, you know, box set three, but uh, the third one really pulled me back in. And then also seeing that Mark seven is not in box set three really made me more interested in picking up box set three. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Humphrey, what would you give this two stories that you've listened to so far? Well, as I say, story one was fine. Story two, I really enjoyed I would probably give them about a seven uh, myself, and I'm really liking the sound of story three. But from what I've heard, I'd certainly give it a seven. All right. Last stop. <laughs> Ooh. Last stop. Um, Humphrey's audiobook corner with the Scourge of the Cybermen. Yeah, I can honestly say brilliant. Um I really like the fact that Big Finish have started this range because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the dramas, absolutely love, love, love the dramas. But with an audiobook, you have the scope to tell a big, big story, you know, and make it last, uh, you know, eight hours. And it means that, you know, it's it's cost effective for both Big Finish and the Big Finish listeners. And you get just eight hours worth of a, well, and certainly in this case, a really good novel. It's really atmospheric. It's, quite frankly, in some places quite scary. Um, John Colshaw does a brilliant job of narrating it. Um we have Nick Briggs as the Cyberman, and he, he does a really nice sort of Troughton-esque Cyberman. They're, well, Troughton slash Tom Baker, because they're very like the Cybermen from Return of the Cybermen, which I think is perfectly fitting, as it's pretty much from, you know, if we were putting it chronologically, it would have been the season before um, Return of the Cybermen would have been in. So, you know, that's fine. But it's a really well-written, well-read story. It's done as a six-parter. Uh, so rather than it being in like chapters, it's done in hour-long episodes. And I quite like, because I heard the um, extras at the end, and I like the fact that um, David Richardson was saying he wanted to do six-parters, but he rather than doing dramas that were six parters he wanted to do novels because there's just so much more you can put in a novel and expand upon in a novel i mean compare eight hours to two and a half which is what a six-part drama would be and i'm not knocking the idea of six-part dramas i would be perfectly happy to see a couple of those if they decided to do that too but um no, I'm really excited for the next one, which is by Matthew Waterhouse, because I'm really, I'm really excited for this whole range. I think it's a nice addition, you know, because what's brilliant about this is for, you know, you've got sort of rain, ranges and stories for, you know, different kinds of people, you know, you've got the shorts short trips and companion chronicles and things for people who haven't necessarily got a lot of time you know they want to listen to an audio but they haven't got a lot of time for whatever reason so you've got that you've got um the um <clears throat> main range slash box sets that people can listen to like to and from work um you know so sort of medium length uh stuff if you like and then the fact they put these they're starting to put these novels out is great for people who want to who have got time to listen to something longer or just want something longer something that's got a lot of meat on it that you can really get lost in so i think it's a great addition to the range and this was a very very strong story to start it off so how was John Colshaw's portrayal of uh, the third doctor? Very good. He he does a very good impression of John Pertwee. Um but he portrays him well as well. He's not 
it's not an impression of John Pertwee. It is the third Doctor. He does him incredibly well, but I'm very glad that they're using him more for novels than for um, dramas, because I like the fact that they've got him as the brigadier in the dramas and Tim Trelaw as the third doctor. Whereas if you'd had him as the third doctor and the brigadier, it would have been a bit, I don't know, to me, it would have just not worked as well. But in terms of reading the novels, he he does him perfectly. He's absolutely cracking, absolutely cracking. Um, he's just very good at voices and accents, full stop. He's an excellent audiobook narrator. Another question I had, because I saw that Simon Guerrier is the writer for mm. this. And one of the tropes that, if you ever listen to any of, uh, in fact, it, he did it in The Settling, but many of the things that uh, Simon Guerrier does in the Companion Chronicles is he relays stories as somebody relating um, a story to somebody else. Is, is that how this story is being told? No, this isn't sort of typical Simon Guerrier writing in that respect. Um, it would have certainly been interesting written by, like that, but... No, he writes it more as a typical typical novel, really. But the way the Big Finish want these novels done, which is nice, actually, is um, they want them modelled on the target books, which were told very simply and straightforwardly, but very well. Uh, so that was kind of his briefing. But I kind of like that because it's sort of, making the story more paramount if you know what i mean and and that's how it should be with doctor who i think um mm. i mean i i like gary as sort of someone else telling the story thing and i can see it working for a novel but i think in many ways it works better in a drama setting that's just my personal opinion it can work well in novels but i i like it even more as a drama. So what would you rate Scourge of the Cybermen? I would definitely give it a solid 9 out of 10. I thought it was excellent, as I say. Well read, well written, and just a jolly good, strong Cybermen story. It doesn't, you know, break new ground as such with the Cybermen, but then it's that's not what it's trying to do. It's... Yeah, I I had a question. Um, why is it called Scourge of the Cybermen? What What's the quote unquote scourge? Is it the scourge because of the you know the Cybermen are the scourge, or is it a plan they've got to enact something or put something in? It's to... kind of a bit of all sorts, and the fact that the planet that the uh story is set on it's set in a sea base and the cybermen and the sea don't mix very well because of the way the sea is on this particular planet so it's kind of the scourge is essentially that plus the cybermen themselves plus their plans if that makes sense so it's a sort of all-encompassing thing but it's mm. it's a very okay. it's a very solid Cybermen story. You know, it is definitely, you know, I would consider it one one of the best Cybermen stories I've heard. Actually, it's very solid, very good, awesome. Well, I guess with that we will conclude this episode of the Doctor Who Lamba podcast. Stay tuned for up and coming episodes where we will review the releases for the month of August, as well as our interviews that have all been recorded, post-produced for our road to episode 200 of the Dr. Who Lambert podcast. So please stay tuned for those as well. Uh, if you'd like to contact the show, please listen to the copyright info for that. And I guess until next time, I see you in time. 
You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alhambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alhambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet us at Alhambra Podcast. That is A L H A M B R A Podcast. Thank you.